Zach Eady, who <laughs> has Purdue in the Final Four after three straight years of just gut-wrenching upsets, losing to double-digit seeds. Mm-hmm. And the buzz has started. The buzz has started. Do you think Edie, who has long been viewed as just, like, not an NBA guy by a lot of people, like, sort of uh, maybe worth a second rounder, that has started to change, and generally he's viewed more highly than that. But do you think he's underrated as an NBA prospect? I do think he's underrated, and it's it's weird. This guy's really polarizing. You know, a lot of people either think that he's a, a bench warmer, a uh, human victory cigar like Boban Marjanovic, or... Uh, you know, or you think he's a, a role player or a starter in this league. Uh, or And there's some people that think he's not even a, a league player at all. Now, I don't think Edie was a play, uh, an NBA caliber player the past couple of years. I think he was a little too uncoordinated. Uh, he was like Bambi out there, man. Like, a, you know, he just couldn't stay on his feet. He, and Edie still has his problems. He's not a perfect player. But there's no way this guy doesn't have a role in the NBA to me either as a bench big man who you run and drop and you play for 20 minutes a night or as a really reliable starter who's, uh, you know, a good starter. I don't know that sub all-star, but I think he's going to be very impactful. Um, I think he's a guy that will give you, uh, you know, a cool 10 and 10 a night with, you know, two to three blocks. I don't see why he couldn't do that. Like, the kid is a physical outlier. That's why I can't see him not getting. Mm-hmm. He's seven foot four, three hundred pounds with a seven foot eleven wingspan. You're telling me that guy can't play in the league? And again, he's not perfect. He is a lumbering big man. He is kind of uncoordinated. I have marked down. He is not the most coordinated. He is not the most fluid athlete, and he is not a crazy vertical athlete. Uh, Zach Eady, I'll tell you what. If he makes it to the league too, he is going to be a poster child. There's going to be some nasty-ass dunks getting yammed down on his head. He is going to be getting thrown down on him a couple he times. He is 7'4". He is 7'4", but somebody's going to put him on one, and it's going to be nasty. It's going to be like, uh, oh, what was that guy's uh Vince Carter, what he put on that 7'2 dude in, yeah, the, in the Olympics. Nice. Yeah, uh, poor fellow. Yeah, like, yeah, Frederick Weiss. Frederick Weiss, yeah. There's going to be some nasty ones like that, but to say that this kid isn't good enough, I think you can put him in drop coverage with defenders around him. And, you know, he's too damn big to not succeed. Uh, My player comp from him uh, is from, I believe this is a 50s or 60s TV show, uh, Lurch from the Adams Family. He's just big body, you know? He's just a big dude. Um, Basically what I'm saying, this kid's just too big, in my opinion, to not succeed. He is not a perfect player. Um, he is not the best athlete. He is not the most fluid mover, but to me, he is such a physical freak and such a physical outlier. There's no way there's not a role for this guy in the league. Like think of a big zoo, a Hartenstein, a Mitchell Robinson. Uh, he's so damn big. I think he's got to be effective. Um, and again, I, Sure, he's going to get picked on and pick and roll a little bit. I think if you get him out on the perimeter, you can bully him a little bit. Um, Again, he's not the best vertical athlete. He may be big as hell. I think he's going to get yammed on a few times. But he's big body. He is huge. I think you can run drop with him, and I think he can be really effective for 20 to 28 minutes a night. I am not too far off from you, but I may be a little bit lower on ed first of all i just want to talk about how insane his production is he's yeah. averaged 25 12 and 2 this year on 66 percent true shooting he's gonna win national player with, of the year with for two blocks seasons. a night man with two blocks a night and going back to back with national player of the year has not happened since ralph sampson and of course the dynamics of college basketball have totally changed and especially over the last 15 years the best players are often leaving after one season and then for a decade before that some of them weren't even playing in college they were playing high school but that's still just insane to replicate that sort of dominance and during the tournament he is the first player up to this point like going into the final four to have averaged 30 and 15 since elvin hayes keep in mind elvin hayes was the first overall picked in 1968 so His production is incredible, and it is annoying to me when people just, like, diminish 
guys who have physical advantages and just say, oh, he's big, that sucks. I get if it's not your favorite thing to watch, but I also think, you know, I'm going to shout out my buddy Ethan for a second here. I'm going to shout him out, but not in such a good way. My buddy Ethan was a hell of a center in football, okay? Hell of a center. Crazy strong. I didn't really watch him that much. I'm going to presume that he had really good feet, really good technique, because otherwise I don't know how he'd be good, but because he was like 5'9". And Big E, shout out to him, would always say like, man, if I was 6'2", I could have done this, I could have done that. And I always hate when people say that about sports because it's like, well, you're not. And the bigger you get, the taller you get, the harder it is to maintain that exact level of coordination. The harder it is to maintain that level of muscle per square inch, right? It's just useless to me to engage in stuff like that. Zach Eady, for being 7'4", is very impressively agile, very impressively coordinated. There's a reason that most 7'4 dudes, first of all, don't play in the league, even though they have this crazy physical advantage, and the ones who do tend to be lumbering and clunky because it's really hard to be coordinated when you are the size of a baby giraffe. So I just want to give him props because, like, he is a dominant college basketball player. His play style is hilarious just compared to how things work in the league. He post-ups per game more than twice as much as 24 NBA teams. Even though he's playing in a college basketball season, which is half the length, he has posted up more than any NBA player this year in terms of total post-ups. He's had like 50 more post-ups than Jokic in half the games. And he scores with really good efficiency there. 85th percentile efficiency out of post-ups. Last game against Tennessee, including passes, he posted up 25 times. Like, this is just a post-hub, the likes of which you do not see in the NBA, even among the best players. You don't see anything close to this, even from Embiid and Jokic. And Edie is basically an auto-double team in college basketball. Like, off the catch, nobody can deal with him in single coverage. So you have to throw a second defender his way. And uh, oftentimes, he can get a good enough shot off on his own anyways. Like, the guy is next-level massive. You mentioned it. 7'4 with a 7'11 wingspan, having, like, a normal, compact build at that size, being strong and decently physical and decently agile. Like, that in itself is an accomplishment. He loves his hook shot. Loves his hook shot. Like, I would say 85% of his post-ups, this is just off the cuff, but, like, my estimate, start from the left block, first of all, and then he's pretty right-hand dominant in those situations. He's probably going to go to that hook, and he shoots 45% on those looks, which is solid self-created offense. But also, when he varies things, when he spins back to the left, he tends to really catch guys out of position because people kind of try to force him left, and then uh, he eats up fouls in those situations. And just generally, he's a foul-drawing machine. He takes over 11 free throws per game. But also... On top of this taut, touch shot making and physicality and foul drawing, he's very solid handling doubles as a passer. Like, he gets pestered all the time. And sure, sometimes he'll turn the ball over. He's not perfect, but generally keeps that ball high, scans the floor, keeps his head on a swivel, and he's going to make the simple kickouts and he's going to create a good look for a shooter on his team. So he's a very solid passing big, I would say. And I do believe he has such overwhelming physical advantages. And because he has good touch, and because he can make those basic reads, he will be an efficient post-up offensive player in the league. He's also been a crazy efficient pick-and-roll finisher. 97th percentile there. And they don't use him in that role a ton. But, I mean, he's massive as a screener, and he's a huge target. He's not quick. He's not a very good vertical athlete. But he also plays with a really good pure point guard and Braden Smith who like just generally gets him the ball in his spots and can make basically every pass out of pick and roll so that helps him but I mean he's going to be at the very least a capable pick and roll big who even if he's not like a vertical spacer in terms of I'm super athletic catching lobs and whatnot I mean he's just a massive massive target around the rim and that's why I just can't see a world where this guy doesn't have a role yeah in the league like even if you threw him against bench units think about some of the bench bigs that are trotted out nowadays mm -hmm. uh, and i'm not picking on these guys but think about these matchups daniel tice xavier tillman yeah uh, trace jackson davis it's like these guys are getting back up five minutes and no disrespect to any of those guys but zach edie's got eight to nine inches on these guys uh -huh. you're just 
they're not stopping or slowing him down at all. It, it's very much, in my opinion, the Zubats quotient. It's like yeah. in those minutes, it's the Valanciunas quotient. It's like in those minutes, if you don't have a big body to counteract our guy, sorry, Edie's just going to eat on you. And you talk about it. That's why I didn't like Edie in these past couple of years. And I wondered, is he an NBA guy? He has developed his own individual game where he's going on the low block and putting in work. Like you said, yeah. where he's making tough shots, where he's kicking out. He's a different player than he once was. And honestly, I didn't realize how freakishly big Derek Lively was in college. I don't know why. Something about the cameras, the angles. <laughs> when he got on an NBA court, I was like, God damn, that dude is yeah. big as hell. And then yeah. it's going to be the same thing with Edie. That's why I think Edie's a lottery pick. He's one of these mm. just – I do. I think Edie's a lottery guy where – Again, I think he's a lively role. And lively's different because I think he can be much more impactful as a rim protector because he's a vertical athlete. But yeah. I think you can play Edie, and, and maybe that's the question. Can Edie survive getting up and down the court that many times? Maybe yeah. that's the question. How Can you give him the 28-minute burn a night? Can you give him the, is it too much on his limbs and on his knees and on his joints because he's that big body? Can you trust him with that volume of minutes? Maybe that's the question. But to me, ability-wise, I think he could be a starting caliber or immediate off-the-bench big immediately. And so for me, for that that archetype, that role that I think he could provide immediately, I would probably take him in the lottery. I think he is a borderline lottery prospect. I wouldn't take him in the lottery. I do think he's a very high-floor player, though. The thing is, you compare him to a Zubats to a Hartenstein. Offensively, I agree. Obviously, he is even more overwhelmingly huge. I would say those guys are a little bit more physical. I mean, Zubots is really the comparison in mm -hmm. terms of like, those guys can just brutalize post-up mismatches. Zoo is absurdly uh, effective there. It's also worth pointing out though that Zoo, like outside of Jokic, might have the best touch in that range in the league. It is literally ridiculous. He shoots like 65% in the paint outside the restricted area. Whereas Edie is going to be closer to 50 hovering around there, which is like still solid offense. But like Zoo is freakishly dominant there. He does not miss those hooks and touch shots. And he is so, so strong. But Edie's mm -hmm. bigger. And I think that in terms of passing, they have similar capabilities where you're like, they can consistently do the basic stuff. Hartenstein, I think, is a little bit better as a passer. He's got more creativity, more feel. But the basic stuff like Zoo and Edie are generally going to do a solid job with. The difference is, Hartenstein is an awesome defender. Awesome defender. Zoo is a very effective NBA defender. And I think Edie is going to be a fine defender he is massive and you cannot overstate the impact of 7-4 with a 7-11 wingspan so he's going to be an elite rebounder he does have solid physicality and uh in drop i think he'll be a slight plus because he's just a disincentive he's a deterrent people don't want to try him he can affect those floaters with his range and he did average over two blocks a game as you mentioned the thing is outside of drop I think you run into a lot of problems with Zach Eady because he is going to struggle more in space. I mean, much more than a Hartenstein, more than a Zubots. He also doesn't have the best defensive instincts in mentality. Like, he's not the sharpest helper. I don't think that he is, like, the most sound positionally. I don't think that he is the highest effort. So, he has his size. And his size is probably enough to make him capable. But I do think there are matchups in which he is just going to get toasted in a way that these other guys don't. And then it's like, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison because he is better than Boban Marjanovic. Because he is a better passer, because he is still more agile, uh, I think he'll be a better defender. Like, definitely a better defender. Boban was never even a good rim protector, remarkably, despite the fact that he is massive. But the point I'm trying to make is, Boban literally could destroy certain lineups. You threw him out there against a small ball look, he would give you 12 points in eight minutes. Like, Boban was 7-4, strong as hell, and had really good touch, a lot like Edie. It's not that they have these super complex post bags. They don't need to. Again, Edie's body control and agility is a little better. But 
Bobon was this crazy effective pure mismatch attacker. But then, defensively, he was too lumbering. He was going to present you so many problems that you were probably only going to play him 12 minutes a night in deployment-specific matchups. Like, Bobon's production per minute is hilarious. He averaged like 23 and 15 per 36 in his career. But overall, he was just giving up too much defensively. He was bleeding too much value. And I don't think that Edie is that. But I also don't think Edie is a plus defender like a Zubots, certainly like a Hartenstein. And I think that's where you run into the issues of, okay, like, yeah, this guy offensively, he's an efficient post scorer, but we're obviously not going to base our offense around him. He's not nearly good enough to do that. So it'll be mismatch attacking. And, uh, He's going to be good at doing the basic big man stuff. He'll be an effective offensive rebounder. He'll be a solid finisher as a roller. Not going to be a floor spacer. Going to be an average defender. There's not a lot of starters around the league who look like that. So I view him as probably a high-end backup. I think he's a guy you can deploy in certain matchups. And if they just can't guard him, if they can't physically match up, like, yeah, I mean, then you maybe ride him for 25 minutes. But I think there are also matchups where defensively he might struggle a bit too much against these teams that can exploit him in space. And then maybe he's a 15 minute a night kind of guy. So I see a path to him being a starter. I don't see a path to him being a high end starter. I don't think he's athletic enough. I don't think he's agile enough. And he would have to have more offensive skill to offset that. But he does a lot of things really well. And this is an NBA player. And this is an NBA rotation player. And you can't just say, oh man. He's big. We don't care. Because he's historically massive. And for being historically massive, he's good at the skill elements of basketball. That was going to be my follow-up for you on uh, if you thought he was a starter or not. So I got one more question for you on Edie. Okay. Do you think you could gimmick up your defense around him to make it a great unit in the sense that you are running exclusive drop, you are funneling guys into him in the paint he's not you don't think he's that kind of caliber of player not if you want to build like a really good defense i think first of all you run into issues if you are a defense that is predicated exclusively on drop because there are certain teams that are going to be good enough in terms mm -hmm. of pull-up shooting and good enough from the floater range where you're just conceding good looks to them. And the whole theory is, oh, well, those aren't great looks for most players, but there are certain teams where they are. And I don't think he's a great enough drop defender. Mm -hmm. Again, I just don't think he has the instincts to be as impactful as a defensive player as maybe he could be, even given his lack of mobility. But generally, defense is predicated upon, all right, we're just going to have our big sit and drop all the time in playoff environments like you just need to have multiple mm -hmm. approaches and y you're not running any sort of switching scheme with Zach Eady. you're not running any sort of hedging scheme like you just don't want him in space but I still think he could be a like you said in certain matchups like again in that's why I think Edie's that valuable of a player is in a playoff environment if the other team doesn't have a guy like that at all, if they don't have another big man that can negate his physical advantages, it's like, okay, I'm going to toss him out there for 20 minutes a night, and in those 20 minutes, theoretically, we should dominate the glass. We should have a guy we can just dump it to on the low block that can abuse a mismatch. Like, I don't know. I think a guy like Edie could not, like, completely swing a series, but he can win you a lot of minutes in a series because of that overwhelming size. I also – I hear you too. I, but again – I think a player like that is valuable where you can deploy him in certain matchups that he can abuse and not give it back on the defensive end. Yeah, but I think teams are going to go at him basically to try to you. say, hey, you can't just have this big dude out here. It's like what people would do against Boban, right? And he's certainly more capable. My point is just there's not a lot of big men in the league who are average defenders. Yeah. Which I think is what Edie's going to be. I don't think it's, oh my god, this guy is unplayable because he's think... just so damn big. But he's not a plus defender who are then unexceptional offensively. Like, straight up. If you're starting, mm -hmm. it's probably because you're a really athletic rim runner. You're a really good rim protector. You're a Gafford. You're a Lively. You're a Mitchell Robinson. There's a bunch of guys in those mold. It's just a simple yet valuable thing to have. Or you are a actual mm -hmm. star, right? You are a... Nikola Jokic, a band, you are an, an Alper AD, and Shang, uh, whatever. Wimby, yeah. yeah. And then there's like a couple guys. Maybe it's just Jonas Valanciunas 
where it's like, yeah, that's a good offensive, big average defensive player. And Valanciunas is a hell of a post scorer. He's a hell of a bully. It's just an uncommon archetype. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm more confident saying fringe starter, high end backup. But I agree. I mean, he's too problematic for some defenses in some specific lineups to deal with for him to not find a role in the league. Okay, my final actual question right. on Edie. <laughs> Do you think is there any is there any area where you can legitimately see him like developing like even more than where he is already? If it were anything, it would probably be as a passer potentially mm-hmm. just like getting more reps at the same time he's never going to get doubled at the frequency that he already has for two years and i think he has improved as a passer but i don't know that he's meaningfully going to change there he clearly has touch but he has been such a non-shooter through four years of college i think mm-hmm. he took seven jump shots this year that like i just wouldn't bank on him developing that i can't say there's a zero percent chance but i would say there's a slim chance he could just get smarter defensively. But I do think you're looking at a pretty refined product here. I mean, this is yeah. a guy who's 22 and has been the focal point of his team for two years, like playing a very refined sort of mm-hmm. mature grown man brand of college basketball. I don't see a lot of room for growth with him. Do you agree? Not a ton. I do think he could get smarter defensively, and that's where mm-hmm. I anticipate as the la- the anchor guy for a defense where, I don't know, maybe two or three years down the line, he's just better positionally, he's more engaged, he's more locked in. I do think mentality and effort have a lot to do with it, too, on his ceiling, on if he's, yeah, a, a role player, a high-end backup five that you deploy in certain matchups, or if he's a starter. I think that's going to be the, the determinant. Um and I like his jumper, but he just misses so many free throws. Like, I like his stroke at the line. Oh, he's not a bad free throw shooter. What is he, 71%? Yeah, what is he? I got it, Martin. And he's like 60, 71. Yeah. yeah. His, his, his jumper Certainly doesn't... gets enough practice, am I right? 11 free throws a night, my God. His jumper doesn't look like broken or anything, but... um. Yeah, I don't. It's not like I see him becoming a legit floor spacer. I think the real determine is going to be how effective he is as a as a defender at the next level. Mm-hmm. I agree.